Well, greetings to my fellow Enable volunteers. This is Jeremy Simon, and I just wanted to do a quick video tutorial. Uh, some of you have reached out to uh, ask about the issues with Thingiverse. Uh, you noticed at the top of their site, uh, they have this note saying that they're working on some performance issues. That's been up there for a long time. I, I'm not quite sure what's going on or what's taking them so long, but one of the side effects of that seems to be that the customizer tool uh, is normally in a non-working state these days. So some of our more popular designs, like the Unlimited Arm and the Unlimited Phoenix Hand, use that customizer. And so normally you would open it in customizer, you would put in the different measurements, set the slider values, and then use that to generate your STL files. And that's not working right now, so I wanted to give you a workaround for that. The Thingiverse customizer actually in the background is working on a platform called OpenSCAD. And you can download that tool. It's a free tool that anyone can download. And then you can run the file that drives that customizer outside of Thingiverse on your own computer. So to do that, go ahead and download the OpenSCAD tool. Go to openscad.org. And in the downloads section, you can just download the version for your operating system and install that application. Once that's installed, you're going to go to the Thingiverse page for the design that you want to make. For example, we're looking here at the unlimited arm. And if you go to the Thing Files section, you'll see that instead of STL files, there's only a single file here which has an extension of SCAD. You'll want to download that to your local computer. So I'll just drop that into my downloads folder here. And now what we'll do is run that open SCAD tool. And when the tool opens, you have a code panel on the left and a preview panel on the right. We're going to open that file that we just downloaded. And when you open it, you'll see that uh, you can see all the code on the left and the preview of the selected part is on the right. And you can zoom that in and out and move it around using your mouse. So currently we're looking at the arm cuff portion of the unlimited arm. And basically what you need to do is modify these values in this upper section here. So in this case, it's lines 17 through 29 for the unlimited arm. Might be a little different for the other designs. But uh, the good news is that their code is very nicely commented. So you can see all these comments that tell you what the next line is for. Those descriptions will help you to figure out what values to put in there. And so we're going to go through and modify those values. And then there's three buttons up here in the toolbar that you'll need. This one right here is the preview button. That's what generates the preview based on your current settings. The next button after that is the render button, which will actually render the final version of that object. And then once you've rendered it, you can then use the next button to save it as an STL file, export as STL. So those are the three sort of sequence buttons that you'll use in this process. So down here, looking at the code, the first uh, variable here is called part. And that's what specifies the part that you're doing. So right now it's set on cuff and we're seeing the cuff over here. There's a comment right after that that tells you what the different values are that you can put in here. So you can put in forearm, cuff, jig, palm, fingers, phalanx, or pins. Those are the parts that can be generated. And you'll want to go through and do each one of those in order to uh, generate all the parts you'll need for a complete device. So for example, if we set this to forearm and then use the preview button up here, you'll see that it changes and now it's showing us the forearm component. So whatever it is that you have set there, that's what it's going to generate. The next one down is left or right. That's pretty straightforward. Just put in left if you're making a left hand device or right if you're making a right hand device. After that, we have hand length. And as the comment says, that's from the wrist joint to the fingertips in millimeters. So in most cases, you'll want to take that measurement off of the recipient's good uh, limb uh, so that the device that you produce will be of a similar scale. So you put that value in in millimeters. Next value is forearm length, which is from the wrist joint to the elbow crease, again in millimeters. Put that value in here. Then you have the bicep circumference, 
in millimeters, so measure around the biceps, around the thicker part of the forearm. Then you have the cuff support length, so this is just the length of that cuff component that goes on the upper arm. You can set that anywhere from 65 to 90 millimeters. And then you have the tension pin bolt hole diameter, which defaults to three millimeters. You can go up to six. So once you have those settings the way that you want in terms of the sizing and the left right component, you basically just go through each one of the different parts uh, by changing that in the part variable. And for each one, you'll want to generate the preview, then go ahead and render. Rendering does take a little longer. You can see the progress bar down here in the lower right. And as you can see, that takes uh, quite a bit longer than the preview, which was very fast. So we'll let this render run. Okay, so that actually took about five minutes. Uh, not the fastest of rendering tools, but uh, you will need to go through and do that for each one of these components. So now that it's been rendered, we'll use the export to STL button to save that as an STL file. And so you would just give this uh, an appropriate name, like forearm, and uh, save that in the folder of your choice. So now we have the forearm exported, then we would just move on to the next one. So after forearm, we might do the cuff, and same process. We're gonna preview it, make sure everything looks good, then we'll render it, and then we'll export that to STL. And we're going to repeat that process for each one of those components. So there you have it. That's your workaround until they get Thingiverse uh, Customizer back online and working properly. Um, hope that's helpful. Talk to you soon. Bye.